Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How you doing? It's Big Porky here. The voice of hardcore boxing. Now, I'm going to do a video now, now at the moment regarding something that I listened to the other night on at Highfield Boxing on Twitter. He's a good friend of mine. He's called Terry Chapandama. He's got a really high job in the city. He's a banker. And he's also an amateur trainer. What that means is, he gives his time up for free. Just like myself, for free. Alright? Doesn't charge or anything like that. He just loves boxing like me. Alright? Without people like him, there wouldn't be any kids coming through, would there? If he turns around and says he wants X amount to train people. So, I think he changed John Pilato, has he just turned pro? He's had quite a few kids turn over that he's had from amateur. So, he's a good guy. He's boxing through and through. I like him. We've had a couple of disagreements, and when we have our disagreements, they're usually legendary, and I don't want to speak to him for a couple of weeks. Rico's usually the referee between us, but he's my mate. And if he's got a problem in a boozer, and I'm there, I'm going to back him up, because that's what you do for your mates, don't you? Now, I'm going to play this to you now. It's about 17, 18 minutes, I think. And I want you to listen to exactly what Terry says, and then I'm going to speak about it afterwards. All right? So, I've just been training now. I'm just going to have some soup. So, I'll try not to slurp. <laughs> All right, ready? Here we go. This is what someone messaged me. For those who are interested in seeing what kind of impact this event had on them and the video sort of exposure, both of their names have shot up in Google Analytics and have been had more than a million impressions since yesterday's win. To put things in perspective, Spencer Walter had 55,000 impressions their entire fight week. Right? Devin was just telling me how many followers he's just gone up and stuff like that. So, and everybody who's out here, we can stand next to both boxing social movies and said he's done one of the most beautiful things I've done. Talking about here is 
the video by, I think it came from Jay Chowdhury from Break Media, and I only know Break Media because they worked with Umar Sadiq, so nominally I'm quite pro-Break Media, and I can also frame the context in which they've done this, because they would want more athletes to work with them and to do a lot of the content care on Logan Paul. So actually for Break Media, this is a great chance to say, look, we provide these services for you. You're you're leaving money on the table by, by not engaging us. And I support that. In abstraction, in isolation, outside the context of this event, I support that. Where I take issue is the way it was presented. And it was presented as if everything just happened by the grace of God. When we all know that it did. So, the first piece of evidence Jay Chowdhury refers to is that both Devin Haney and Billy Joe Saunders managed to generate over a million impressions. Now, I'm not sure if this is just fight night or this is fight week. And Jay clearly spoke without understanding how boxing works, right? And he may have a warped understanding of the value of each of his fighters because for all of Hearn's bluster and talk, no one really knows who Devin Haney is. And I mean, even within the boxing community, so he's never going to generate that sort of interest. Am I supposed to believe that a bunch of 15-year-olds are going to see a young black kid boxing at lightweight and go, wow, who's Devin Haney? It wasn't that kind of performance. And he isn't that sort of charismatic, interesting guy who would make you want to Google him afterwards. He's just incidental to what you've come here to watch, which is KSI Logan Paul. So, so if we break down this audience into three segments, the youngsters who love KSI Logan Paul, they might on a whim Google Devin Haney to see if he's famous or not, but they don't care about him, nor do they care about Billy Joe Saunders. Then there's the parents of these kids who have to get involved because they don't hear anything other than this. Some may be boxing fans, most are probably not, so they don't care about Devin Haney or Billy Joe. Then you've got the third group who are the, the boxing guys who are like, we already know who these guys are. So why do we need to Google them or have any interest? So, so this idea that they can get a million impressions, and impressions don't mean anything. It just means it was put on the screen. There's no guarantee you can see. There's no way of verifying that. So that's essentially where we're at, right? We're, we're now looking at this idea of a million impressions going, it means absolutely nothing. It doesn't. And it, it's indicative, actually, that something else has happened further up the value chain to drive this which we'll come on to later. But just know that you can get that kind of, you know, kind of impact. Literally, anyone can do this. Go and pay three quid to get 250 retweets on your tweet. Let it cook for about two or three days. Tell me what your number of impressions is. It'll be a really high number. It doesn't mean anything. And a million impressions probably translates into about 10 ticket sales, if we be brutally honest. So that's the first thing. And this worrying thing is, they showed the graph, right? They showed the graph of impressions, and it does nothing. And then it has this spike in like a fraction of a second, and it's straight back down again. Almost as if they've just been a glut of instantaneous, I mean instantaneous, Google searches on Billy Joe and Deb, and Deb and Haney. Which, if you've bought the fight, you already know who's on there, right? So why would it spike? It would be flat for the whole week and then it spikes on fight night, but you've already bought the thing. You've been, you've watched, you've watched all the content. So you're telling me that nothing but the fight drove the number of impressions. Statistically, these numbers don't make any sense. It was the graph that gave it away in that instance. Because with most of these things on social media, you get what I call the nose effect and the tail effect. So the nose effect is the bit of awareness, engagement, impressions, whatever you want to call it, up until you really start pushing your content or start marketing. Before you start spending the marketing dollars, there's a nose effect. And then there's a tail effect, which is what happens after you stop spending your marketing dollars. And the tail's normally longer than the nose. There's no nose on this and there's no tail on this, which tells you that it's not organic. So you've got to be suspicious of it. So then the next discussion becomes one around how many 
additional Twitter followers Billy Joe and Devin Haney got. Uh, I think it was 10,000 for Billy Joe, 15,000 for Devin Haney. Billy Joe Saunders has been in the public eye in this country since 2008. He's been to America to fight Lemieux already. In a performance that was heralded. So I would struggle to understand how he can double. Like I said before, I don't believe 15 year olds give a toss who Billy Joe. He's an old man at 30, 31 years old. He's an old man to a lot of this audience. You know, Devin Haney, I could get, and if it was Ryan Garcia on there, I'd get it too. But Billy Joe's not of that demographic, so why would they even be interested? The fact is, they wouldn't. So, what you're seeing here is what you see in doping. When someone comes from nowhere and runs a 9.75, and you're like, where's that come from? You were running 10.21, you were running 10.35, now you're running 9.75, and then you go on to run 10.35 again. So now all of a sudden we're like, this doesn't feel right. When you start to look at these numbers, they don't feel right. Any number Hearn is associated with doesn't feel right. And then you start to look at the reference he makes to, well, it's benefited everyone. You're doing million plus views. Um, how, how, how are all these media outlets doing million plus views? How many times do you want to watch a KSI Logan Paul way? Once you've seen it on IFL, I don't imagine there's much value in watching it anywhere else. Same thing with the Hernan. So, if someone told me a million people watched the weigh-in, I might believe it. But to believe that a million people on three or four different platforms watched it or close to that, and I'm, and I'm, I'm exaggerating the numbers for this person effect here, but you get what I mean here, right? There's only so many people that are going to watch that weigh-in. And what will be led to believe is they watched it on four different platforms. Why? There's no answer to that. Right? There is no answer. I'm getting warmed up. When they talk about the arena was full. Mm, perhaps. But tickets were given away. Why? Right? And how do you know? Because they say it was sold out. It definitely wasn't sold out because tickets were available right up until the event started. So that's not true either. And this all leaves me very uncomfortable because it points to systematic cheating of the system. And here I'm just gonna just just pose some questions. If as a platform boxing social rarely gets over fifty likes and rarely ever gets over twenty retweets, and I'm being generous here. How can they do a million views? Who's pushing that? You're telling me kids are just there Googling boxing social KSI Logan Paul. You're not doing that, right? And if you are just Googling KSI Logan Paul, IFL are going to come up because they've been at it longer. They rank higher on the social media scores. They rank higher on the search engine scores. So we go back to that point. Boxing social don't have the infrastructure. They don't have the legacy. They don't have... Anything about them that suggests they could do a million plus views, neither do seconds out. And I'm not saying that to disrespect seconds out. I'm just saying, look, it looks like all these numbers have been inflated in this week. Do I think it was malicious? No. Do I think it was designed to create this impression that this was a big event? Yes. The reality is it wasn't a big event. Because everyone is in their camp. If you're a KSI Logan Paul fan, you're getting your content through their channel. If you're an IFL fan, you're already getting your content through their channel. You're not crossing over. Why would you cross over? There's no reason to cross over unless you're a media outlet trying to get multiple perspectives. And that's not a million of us. Which brings me back to my point. Ever since Hearn got burned in America by Steve Kim, ESPN, Nesta Gibbs, the boxing boy, and the lad from the barbershop, whatever, and I forget who his name, what his name is, but he was also important. Once Hearn got burned by the American market who don't care about him, because they already had Fight Man, they already had Radio Rahim, they have their outlets that do impressive numbers as well, and Fight Hype are undoubtedly number one. And if you don't believe me, if they ever went head to head with Coogan, Coogan can only pull out Eddie Hearn, they can pull out Floyd Mayweather. They can pull out Andre Ward. They can pull out
pull out Roy Jones Jr. They can pull out Hall of Fame boxing royalty to do their numbers instead of a raggedy ass fucking Eddie Hearn and shit. And this is the nub of it. Hearn's built his defensive line, you know. You've got IFL as your linebackers, you've got seconds out as your center, you've got behind the gloves as your nose tackle, whatever. But you've got your defensive line there, so Hearn can just quarterback all of this bullshit to the fans. And we lap it up because we believe these outlets are there to hold the promoters to account, which they're not, for being honest. So that's why the British media outlets that were out there had their expenses paid for. The expenses were paid for, and I know this because just a random beer with someone that does work for design, you know, and, and that has been verified as well. You know, the the LinkedIn exchange happened, you know, but <coughs> I bring it back to this point. There was an allocated marketing budget for KSI Love. If I'm a media outlet, I'm trying to get a slice of that pie. And if it means I need to tow the Eddie Hearn line, that's what I'm going to do. Because that's going to pay for my trip to LA. And I could be out there getting great content, which will keep my sponsors happy and get my subscriber numbers up, hopefully. So I just do what Eddie tells me to do. I don't rock the boat. I don't argue. I play my position. And they all play their position. And in turn, you get your expenses paid. You get your flights taken care of. You get to live out there. Because... On the videos that these guys do, they couldn't afford these trips to LA, even with the sponsorship. Just the flights alone are going to kill you. So they need a sponsor to take care of all of that. I don't need a sponsor. And Hearn can do that with the DAZN budget, and he can justify it by saying, look at the numbers they produce. Fake. But part of that spend, I am confident, is likely to be on buying YouTube views, across multiple platforms, buying YouTube subscribers across multiple platforms, and the the canary in the mind for this was simply when Eddie Hearn went from zero to 100,000 subscribers on Matchroom TV in eight hours, which tells you they were bored. So all of this is getting bored. Twitter followers are getting bored. And the reason why the Twitter growth is smaller than the YouTube growth, Twitter followers Twitter engagement is a lot more expensive. More dear, buy. too dear. You can buy a million YouTube views for about 2,400, 2,500 pounds. If that's coming out of a marketing budget, that's that's not that much. That's discretionary spend. Buy a few subscribers for about 500 quid. Get a few likes just so it looks like your your content's engaging. And all in all, you could probably spend about 3,200 boosting that video up. Now you say, look, I've got a million. Stopped. You know, now you say, look, I've got a million plus views on that. Your sponsors are delighted. And if you're on a success fee, then that adds to your success. Nearly finished now. But look, the, the I'm going to explode in a minute. It, that's not going up. Got me exploding to top up. on. It's just YouTube because YouTube's the cheapest outlet in which you can just manufacture growth. Twitter on a lesser scale, so you can do it with a Devin Haney because he doesn't tweet that much. And to be honest, the average number of likes on his is about 200, so he's not really a Twitter guy, he's more of an Instagram guy. But he's self made, so he has the audience he's probably likely to ever have unless he starts winning. So, where's this all coming from? This is all the zone marketing money. All they do is just boost up these videos and create artificial images that these outlets are more successful and more engaged than they actually are. And that's why ultimately, none of them dare ever upset Eddie Hearn. If you upset Eddie Hearn and you get cut off from the matchroom money, the sky money, and the DAZN money, Is what someone messaged me. So he's not really a 
Facebook, so it's a guy, he's more of an Instagram guy. But he's self-made, so he has the audience he's probably likely to ever have unless he starts winning things. So where's this all coming from? This is all the zone marketing money. And all they do is just boost up these videos and create artificial images that these outlets are more successful and more engaged than they actually are. And that's why ultimately, none of them dare ever upset Eddie Hearn. If you upset Eddie Hearn, you get cut off from the matchroom money, the sky money, and the design money. Well, basically, what Terry Chappendarm is saying there is, and I quote, Terry Chappendarmer is saying that Eddie Earn and his little group are all having you all off, all your sponsors. Now these people, what they are is, Terry and a couple of his pals have all got very, very good jobs. They're all well up on all these computers. I mean, they forgot more than we know about computers and how it all works. Now, basically what he's saying is, look, they're trying to make it look good, aren't they, with the zone and sponsors and things like that. Now, I can show you, and I might do it some stage this week, analytics. I can show you them on my account, and I can show you them on Coogan Cassidy's account. I can get them up on here. I can get Rob Tebbett's up, all of them. With software I've got here. And it's not hard. It's legal as well. You can all do it yourselves. Go into it and have a look. These people are cheating. Right? They are cheating. If you've got a problem, come see me. All right? Terry's spoke out about it. I've been telling you all for months, but, you know, it don't work like that, the industry, but if you can get away with it, you'd, got, you'd have some use to Eddie Earn. Now, they reckon Eddie Earn's got them all in a, in, a, in a factory, like a sweatshop, you know, like Mike Baldwin, they're all like that, on computers all day, putting fake news out. It's paid off for him, hasn't it? And he's going to work his fingers to the bone with Daz, and well, work them to the bone. All it really means is, he goes that way on an aeroplane and that way. Talks to Coogan, talks to Boxing Social, talks to Behind the Gloves, refuses to speak to certain media outlets, gets up on stage, does a presser and flies back. And he's working his nuts off. So he's telling you, he's working my gonads off. It's all lies, isn't it? When you work your gonads off, do I, do I look like I'm working my gonads off? I ain't got a day's graft in me. Working your gonads off is when you're in a field in prison in Lindholm and Moorlands and you're digging cabbages up. That's when you're working your gonads off. Or when you take your pick in 12 hour shifts. Or you're working that pit like my old man. That's when you're working your nuts off. In the winter of 1963, when everything was froze. Now, that's not work what Eddie Earn's doing. He's conning you all, in my opinion. They're fudging the numbers, but what can you do? What can you do? They've got the platforms, haven't they? They're going to get away with it, aren't they? Now, as long as you boxing fans allow them to do it. Now, it all reeks of desperation now, this Dazone, doesn't it? I mean, Logan Paul against KSI, two white collar guys fighting because they've been given boxing licenses. They're going to make the debut. What about, is that an insult to all the rest of professional boxers? You damn right it's an insult. Nobody's going to say anything though, are they? Because they're going to need Eddie Earn down the line. Look, they're at the top of the tree. If you're Henry the Eighth, right, and you've got all the peasants in the fields, right, working their arse off to pick you enough cherries for a cherry pie and you're Henry the Eighth, the king, who's going to complain to Henry the Eighth? If you're selling some of cherries to other people, no one's going to say a word, are they? Or if you promote certain people to top up food chain. Say if I'm a peasant and I've just arrived into Berkshire and I want to pick cherries and I want a job picking cherries for the royal family 
and I can get royal family some gold, right, for instance, you're going to put meat at the top, innit? You? you mind working your way through, but all them fighters in country, right, who fight at your call, and small, small old fighters, they know, because they're, they're all unhappy about it, the only people who are speaking out are ex-fighters and people like me who don't fight. They all know. The ex-fighters that aren't speaking out are employed by Sky or Matchroom. Dave Allen wants to say something, doesn't he? Steffi Ball, they want to say something. But they, they want to get some of the pie, don't they? Rodier, heard David Allen's interview, aren't you, on IFL? Saying, well, you know, if I said what I really want to say. Well, Dave will say some at went times, right? But once he's said it, he will not be able to go back, will he, on Sky? So he's not going to rock the boat, is he? Frank Warren's going to say something, isn't he? Because he's in competition with him. I'm going to say something, because I don't really give... I'm not really bothered about any of them. I'm a boxing fan that's got a YouTube channel and I do a bit of graph with Dennis Stoner. That's it. I'm not special, I'm just like you lot who watch this. Just a boxing fan at heart. I'll always be a boxing fan no matter what. But what's going on is wrong. The problem I do have with it, and this is why I just put Terry's thing on there, is the problem I've got with it, and I don't know if he said that bit at the end, I don't know if I cut it off, he said at the end, if you're going to complain, I think he said if you're going to complain about it, You can buy a million YouTube 